Well, hello, and welcome back. Well, you probably recognize these from the infamous gold bar and silver bar shapes and colors. I actually like it. I know some people think it's cheesy, but I think I, I like it. I have no problems with it. On your left, we have Paco Rabanne's famous One Million. It's in an EDT concentration. And on your right, we have Paco Rabanne's One Million Lucky, and it is an EDT. I'm going to go over the scent profiles, the performance, masculinity, day or nighttime use, price, would I buy it again, and which one, which one am I going to wear today? Which one am I going to wear today? Okay, on the Paco Urban 1 million on your left, it's just called 1 million, and uh, it opens up with a fresh alcohol blast of grapefruit, mandarin orange, and mint. On your right, the Lucky, it opens up with a fresh yet warm hazelnut sweet citrus opening on the alcohol blast. And back to the one million, once it settles on the skin, the rose emerges out from the background more to the forefront. And then it's got a little bit of spice, a little bit of amber. When it settles on your skin, the lucky, you get even more hazelnut and you get a honey, an amber, some jasmine, and for a little bit of body, there's some cashmere wood. So there's a little bit of wood in the scent. Not too much, just in the background, just a bit lurking. And on the dry down, the 1 million, it introduces or transitions, well, introduces uh, some patchouli, Indian patchouli, and gets a little bit more woody too. But it also remains... Uh, rose prominent with some spice and amber and just a bit of the fruit from the beginning citrus and on the lucky on top of the hazelnut sweet honey and amber and jasmine you get a little bit of patchouli and a little bit of vetiver just to add a little interest to the scent so it's not just overly sweet, over the top. It actually reminds me of, um, well, I'll get back to it in a minute. Okay, back to the one million. The uh, citrus with rose overtones, the citrus with rose overtones turns more into a musky, animalic amber. So not only do you have the opening and mid sense, you have musky type of amber as an overtone on top. And then back to the one million, as I was going to say, it reminds me of a gourmandy type of fragrance. You almost want to eat it because to me, the overall feeling of it is or a smell is, reminds me of waffles with hazelnut syrup. I guess you can get that at IHOP. Anyway, um, it also adds the amber and patchouli to make it interesting, but it's mainly a uh, gourmandy hazelnut syrupy, well, not syrupy, but syrup uh, type of scent. And on performance, the one million is a good performer. It projects a decent sillage, and you'll have a little bit of a scent trail. Well, more than a bit, you'll have a good scent trail. And also on the Lucky, the performance is good and good projection, and you'll have a decent sillage. For longevity on the one million, it turns into a skin scent after about 45 minutes. And on my dry skin, it'll probably last four to five hours overall. On the Lucky, it turns into a skin scent about half an hour in. And then 
also will last 45 hours. Now back to the 1 million on masculinity, I give it a 7.5. 7 it is a masculine scent. And I think the patchouli amber, musky amber, gives it that masculine touch. And on the lucky, I give it a six for masculinity. Because of the sweetness of the honey, I think even ladies might want to wear it because it's got that little bit of sweetness. But it's a masculine sweetness. And then when would I wear the one million? Well, it's more of a nighttime feel, but you could rock it during the day also, no problems. But to me, it's more of a nighttimey, date night, uh, dinner out type of fragrance. And if you want to smell interesting, yet familiar, that's the time to wear it. And then on the Lucky, I would wear it day or night. It's, it's good both day and night. Price-wise for the one million, you're going to pay a mid to upper designer price. And it's been out for a while, so it's been discounted a bit from the original op um, introduction of it. It's been out for several years now. And then the pricing on Lucky, the last time I checked, it is a designer price, and it's a little bit more than the $1 million. Uh, you're going to pay a designer price and a little bit more than the regular $1 million. Would I buy these again? The $1 million? I would say it's interesting enough with the muskiness that it interests me to where I would buy it again if I lost the bottle. And then, on the Lucky, would I buy it again? I say a definite yes because I really like the sweet... Uh, overtones of the gourmandy, waffly, syrupy overall scent. Now, I would say go out and get these because these are so famous, but see if you could try them out beforehand, if you like them or not. They're not cheap, so you're going to pay pretty penny for them. And... Uh, Good luck. Oh, well, one million lucky. Good luck. Yeah, so you'll get lucky on the one million, or both, or one of them. Well, I hope that covers everything and answers uh, some questions that you might have had for these fragrances. Please like, subscribe, share, comment, and take care. We'll see you next time.